What I want to do is encourage empaths and codependents to strengthen their position. And this is really often where we mess up. Have an abundance mentality as opposed to a scarcity mentality where there's fear of lack, fear of loss, a feeling of insecurity. In order to have this abundance mentality, you need to align with people who aren't always trying to get advantage or take advantage of you or people who are unwilling or unable to create win-win solutions. I mean, maybe they don't have anything out for you, but they just don't really have anything to add to you. You know what I'm saying? I know that this advice is easier said than done in a world full of people who play zero-sum games. Many of us are trauma wounded over this from our past. We are conditioned to believe that we must lose in order to have a chance at winning. That you have to give something up to gain something. Well, mm, this is programming from childhood, unfortunately, for codependents that we have to reprogram. We need to always strive for win-win relationships and don't enter into deals if it's not going to be a win-win situation. Structure your life to avoid negotiation as much as possible. For example, if you've got a business, I've learned this the hard way with my business. Don't offer discounts for business. A lot of people in business will say don't offer discounts because then you're going to have to keep renegotiating with people. People who are always wanting a discount or wanting you to extend the sale or extend the conditions to them. Instead, they say sell to affluent people instead of people who are just looking for the cheapest option because hagglers are a hassle. People who pay the least often complain the most. Unfortunately, this is a true story. I, I'm very sorry to say. But getting more on an interpersonal level, you want to avoid personal relationships with people who are parasitic and opportunistic in nature. They're always asking for favors or forgiveness for repeated offenses. There are people out there who want you to win with them. It's just a matter of finding them. Weed out the ones who won't, hard as that might be. Another tip is don't be afraid of being told no. This is fear of a rejection a lot of empaths need to get over. The more inquisitive you are, where you're, again, you're just intel gathering and <laughs> you're learning about another person as they're learning about you, well, you're, you're finding their limits and boundaries as they're finding yours. And as I said before, see if you can get this person to say no. So you can see how much they're willing to offer you. It's better to know these things up front rather than after you've given your all. Dan Locke, he said, ask for the moon. Don't do what he says to be greedy, but to get the best deal while making it a win-win. If you ask for the moon and they reject it, then you can say, well, what, what can you do? I mean, if you can't do that, what, what can you offer me? Others say do it in a way that may seem annoying, but not offensive. Right, you, you kind of got to use your own judgment with that, but give the other person leeway to haggle so that you can get what you most need and want. But again, I'm hearing, and a lot of empaths don't do this, the advice is always ask for more than what you really want, because that gives you the opportunity to make some sacrifices while you're negotiating. It gives you some wiggle room in negotiation for you to give things without totally giving yourself away. Another tip is to use silence and brevity strategically, as opposed to hyper-attuning, telling on yourself, betraying and exposing, or not remaining present with yourself, which empaths do a lot, okay? By using silence and brevity strategically, you're not bothered or scared by moments of silence. Ask what they want, then be silent and listen. If it's not what you want, then maybe... Some say, you know, you could flinch or pause just to get them to back off and retract what they're saying. Maybe you shoot back and say, oh, that was a bit more than what I expected. Then wait. Is that the best you can do? Wait. Silence at a bad offer, while maybe even lowering your eyes, can drive some people crazy, and one interrogator said. <laughs> it's, it's an interrogation tactic. Um... When they decline your offer, silence, silence. And then maybe say, after a long pause, this is what I can do for you. And that's all. Boundaries maintained. No apologies, no explanations. Here's my line. I've drawn it. 
Final tip, be willing to walk away. And I said this earlier, sometimes losing is winning. Sometimes walking away is the right thing to do, as much as that hurts. I know sometimes you want to work out an arrangement with this person. You really want it. I get it. Some of you will give yourselves away just to have an opportunity. But that kind of desperation is when you, you sell yourself, you betray yourself. You sell yourself on the future of, well, eventually I can get them to come around to my way of thinking and eventually they'll give back to me. And that, that's how empaths get screwed over. And it happens because we're attached to a particular outcome and a particular person. And you, you've got to get more secure within yourself to know that this person or opportunity, it ain't, it ain't the only rodeo in town. You know what I'm saying? But when this happens and you feel like you need to walk away, you could say to this person, it'd be nice if we could do this, but it's okay if we don't and mean it. Let them know you really want to do this, but you're not desperate. Or you could say something to the effect of, if you're not going to be happy with this arrangement, well, then neither will I. The point is, don't be needy or desperate. You're there to work out a win-win deal. Don't be attached to the outcome if it doesn't create a win-win solution for both of you. And I'm going to tell you, for those of you who do feel needy or desperate or insecure, like, I really need this person to make this deal with me, well, look... This is where you need to work on getting more options in your life that give you the confidence to walk away. It, in a sense, detooths the downside of losing the negotiation. It lessens the hurt because you're not depending on it. It's not your end-all be-all. And I'm going to tell you, it's a very telling situation. If you feel like you have to give yourself away, you have to have this person, you have to have this deal, even if... It means they win at your expense and you end up losing in the end. You got to ask yourself, why do I not have better options than this? And what do I need to do? So in the future, that's not the case. Fortify yourself. When you decline offers, never take the blame for saying no. Pass the blame onto the other person. Be the good guy. A lot of experts in negotiation say this. Say something to the effect of, I really wanted this to work out, but I just don't see how to make this work without blank from you. Or maybe something along the lines of, maybe if we could fill in the blank, we could work this out. At least that's my hope. Another thing is you could have basically a get out of jail card, some call it a reason to leave or get you out of a sticky situation without hurting feelings. So... Uh, maybe you're in the middle of making a negotiation with somebody and this is maybe perhaps more on the business front where it's a bad deal, you see you're not going to win at it and so you say, well, I must take a another call now or I have, I have to get back to work now, I've got to go now and you <laughs> maybe even set a little alarm to go off so it looks like your phone's ringing or something like that. Do what you got to do to exit and walk away is the the main message here. The problem with win-lose arrangements, as I've said before, is that it causes resentment in both parties and people don't want to get involved with that again. Narcs, they really need to learn this lesson. If you win at other people's expense, then everyone loses. In business, right, you won't get repeat business referrals, a good reputation, if you have a bunch of win-lose dynamics with your customers, right? Similarly, in relationships, there's going to be breakups, divorce, estrangement, isolation that results when you have a bunch of win-lose dynamics in relationships. Empaths need to learn that too. When we agree to win-lose arrangements, we're cheating others out of these life lessons. We're affirming their false belief that they can and should get unfair advantage over others. And they'll not learn to be self-aware or other-aware. So kindly but firmly raise other people's awareness by being a better negotiator and advocator for yourself. We need to negotiate for win-win solutions and I hope this video has helped you to do just that. Thanks for watching. If you want to see the next video in the series, I'll have it here as soon as it's available. In the meantime, if you want more resources for empaths, click here. And remember, I've got my book available on Amazon. And I appreciate all your likes, shares, subscribes, comments down below. Thank you so much for your support.